ma che so che like so <laughs> and uh, yes but anyway we trust the Lord we trust the Lord you know that uh, we are trusted that uh, what I'm going to share that it be of some benefit to my brothers and sisters so thank you welcome you all and uh, Dear brothers and sisters, it's easier to talk about surrender than actually come to our place of surrender. <coughs> Who has lived in the perfect surrender to God? Jesus and Mary in all the signs to a degree. I mean, Jesus lived in that in total surrender and obedience to his father. He lived in perfect surrender. When he was a child, when he was youngster, and in his adult life. Dying on the cross, for us, he gave it all. <coughs> what a humility, what a generosity. What a motion of mercy that only God can have. He died for you, he died for me. And each human being from the beginning to the last man, the army. That is perfect surrender. Mary was the sign in her, in her obedience and surrender to our heavenly Father. Her life was total surrender to God. So how can we come to that place of surrender? To the holy will of God. Dear brothers and sisters, imitating Jesus and Mary. Imitating uh, Jesus and Mary, learning from signs and praying for that grace. Surrender is not just our own striving or pushing ourselves. It is important with our free will to decide to go. But when we have but we have to know that without his grace we can do nothing. For me personally, as we have been going through this uh, seminar, Easy Steps to Holiness, I came to a conclusion that I'm not bad with forgiveness. Even repentance is not that hard for me. But surrender, I really have to work hard at it. I mean, all three are sort of connected. But still, there is a special, you know, in surrender, there is that special, I don't know, um, there is a place, you know, for that, for that, for that grace, for the surrender. How do I know that I'm in that place of surrender to God? When I have peace in my heart and in my mind. Dear brothers and sisters, the mind is a big battlefield for all of us. I know it is for, certainly for me. For me, worry comes so easily and in such a sneaky way. I remember even as a child of five years old, I used to be very worried and anxious. It is something that is deeply rooted in me. <coughs> I remember as a child, probably around five. <coughs> Sorry, there's some, some coming. I remember even as a child, five years old, I used to see my grandma making bread, you know what I mean? And then I tried to memorize that. And I remember at the end, you know, I tried to remember this and that and steps, how you do it. But at the end, I, I remember saying to myself, you never know how to do it. And I saw. So it is something that is deeply rooted in me. I even don't know how it comes and when it starts. But before I know it, I am swimming in it. In my mind, the battle goes something like this. My beats that I should say this 
I'll prove that, and on and on it goes. Yet in Luke 12, 22 to 32, Jesus said, I'll, I'll just uh, share this scripture a little bit, there might be, I don't know, um, so I meditate, we can meditate a little bit on it. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor tree. They have neither storehouse, storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Or how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do small, to do, to do so small a thing as that, why, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of those. But if God so clothed the but if, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive to die and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will, will he clothe you? You of little faith. And do not keep striving for what you are to eat or what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things. And your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for this kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So brothers and sisters, this is really beautiful, you know, beautiful words of Jesus. Like, he signed that to us, and we should take it to heart. It's not just, and I don't think so, Jesus um, said this word just to, I don't know, for the sake of science. They are the words that he meant and, and wanted deeply to, to sort of in, in, in place in our heart, you know, to, to, yeah. So, you know, it's good, um, it helped me to die reading this scripture and meditating a little bit and just to see just what I felt in my heart, how much God loves us. How much we should trust him with everything. How much we should let go. Yeah, so I just um, Brothers and sisters, no matter with what weaknesses we struggle the most, worries, anger, unforgiveness, all kinds of attachments to people, to material things. But it is what we do with them. We have all the help we need available. We have daily mass sacraments and we need to pray about it. It is good to have specific time of prayer every day. We need to put God first in our lives. So with this, you know, like, um, I today actually went, uh, went, went to my spiritual uh, director and um, had confession and a bit of sharing. 
and I, I said to him, it's interesting, more I cry, more sort of peace, easier for me to come to that place of peace. Because God is faithful. When we knock, you know, the door will be open. When we ask, it will be given. Like years ago, I remember, you know, I went through, through depression, probably around now, 10 years ago. And, uh, and I'm not saying some people might have a clinical depression or, you know, but for me, it was all that, you know, very much connected with worry, with anxiety, with, uh, and I could never control my thoughts, you know. If I would be worried, then it would be all die, sort of like a, a war coming, and, and uh, uncontrolled thoughts. I couldn't come to that place of peace. But then with my deeper conversion, bit by bit, and then with commitment to God, you know, for me to die, it's much easier, doesn't matter what bothers me, doesn't matter even if I slip into worry and anxiety, it's so much easier to come into that place of peace. And if it doesn't help one rosary or 15 minutes prayer, then I try more. And eventually I always come into that place of peace, in, in the place of serenity. I'm not saying it's perfect, but certainly it's much better than it used to be. And also, I think, you know, like I had a, one of our children going through a bit of tough time. And it's interesting, you know, when we ask God to give us peace, when we ask God to help us in surrender. So this afternoon, you know, during prayer time, Lord exactly showed me where our son is in our life. You know, showed me. Yes, there is a problem this day. But then I, through that time of prayer, I receive hope in my heart. He'll be okay. There's foundation there. I just need to clean a bit of those foundations and it will be okay. So prayer is answer. Through prayer, we do come to surrender. You know, and, and you know, that's the way to go. And God is faithful, you know, God, God is faithful. If we sincere, and, and we sincerely ask, and, you know, and we already covered last week, you know, repentance, forgiveness, last couple of weeks. If, if we, before actually, before going into deeper prayer, and we just spend a bit of time, five minutes, you know, Lord, Holy Spirit, please, Help me to, to repent, help me to forgive. Then surrender comes. That's a third step and it comes slowly. So I'll just uh, continue with that. So one of the virtues we need the most is humility. And that's where that repentance comes, that's where forgiveness comes. Because if we don't forgive, you know, if, if we, if, if there is unforgiveness in our heart, you know, that is rooted in pride. War is also rooted in pride, in pride as well, and, and other weaknesses as well. So humility is the foundation for all other virtues to grow within us. The way I see it, all our weaknesses, including war, is rooted in pride. So every day in my prayer, I pray a golden rosary that my mom uh, taught me. And maybe next week I can bring if you're interested. Like I pray that every day. It goes on the ordinary rosary and goes something like that, you know. Jesus of gentle and humble heart, make my heart like yours is. And I think if we say that 50 times a day, and it's, you know, it's a very short uh, rosary. It probably takes around six, seven minutes. You know, if we try that daily, it's like 50 times that. I mean, God is faithful. Bit by bit, we will grow in a, in a deeper humility. My brothers and sisters, we have to be honest with God and with ourselves. If we are serious about growing in holiness, we have to make steps 
to let go and let God take over in our lives. And it's, we have to pray for that grace. I mean, at the beginning, when I got into renewal, probably now, probably now around 27 years ago, like at the beginning, I was excited, I was, I don't know, I think that there are emotions as well. There is that emotional high at the beginning of, of our journey, at the beginning of my journey. There was that as well. But then, it's so easy, I think, later on, you know, illness came to the family and, and um, this problem, that problem. It's so easy to lose heart. And I think I did a little bit. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe last five, ten years. I, was, I still follow the Lord. I still uh, pray daily. But I think deep within, I think I lost that deeper trust in the Lord. So maybe last a year or six months, a year, I think, I don't know, it's just that grace. Again, I think I again have that grace. Lord, I trust you. You know, nothing is possible for you. Doesn't matter problems, doesn't matter illnesses in the family, doesn't matter this. I don't understand everything, but I do trust you. And that, you know, trust and surrender goes together. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, and we have to ask uh, Holy Spirit to help us. You know, help, Holy Spirit is our help, as I said this afternoon, as I was praying, you know, Lord, I think Holy Spirit really gave me care answer. You know, I could see, gave me hope in my heart. This son of house will be okay. Lord is doing a bit of work in him, like in all of us, from time to time, sometimes more, sometimes less. But sometimes he really takes, I don't know how to say it, but real big work. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, and it helps to give up things as well. I think for this um, land, I thought to myself, what should I give up? So I already, you know, do a bit of fasting and all of that. So I thought, likely I never, if my year ago, I never knew how to look on YouTube much, or this or that. But then last year I started, ah, oh, everything is interesting. So I'm, I started to become like teenagers around, or, or other adults as well. Constantly something there. Then I thought, okay, let me come, I'll give up that. I'll give up television as well, because I, so I'm a clingy person, and I sit very hard to get me up. You know, if I'm, if, even if someone else is watching something. Yes, yeah, so I, uh, and then shopping, you know. I'm, I'm a busy person, and I'm not saying that I'm whole dying shopping, you know, but when I'm there, ah, what a fashion, and this and that. And sometimes, to be honest, just waste of time. Then I, then I go home, I hop in the car to go home, and I thought, that's an hour wasted, I could have been private, you know. So it's nothing wrong to go to shops, what we need, you know, but I thought for myself, uh, this, this was a good decision. And, and, uh, and I really noticed the difference, you know, being detached from these things. I, I have more time for prayer, and prayer was, I just had that drive, you know. Okay, Lord, now is the prayer time, or even being in the car, driving somewhere. I felt the difference, that my heart was more with the Lord, my mind was quickly turning more, uh, you know, to prayer and talking to God or asking to be with me or, you know. Okay. So brothers and sisters, we live in a fallen world. It is normal to have weaknesses and to struggle with them. So we all normal people. We struggle, we have weaknesses, we struggle with them. But it's what we do with them. Our weaknesses actually should draw us closer to God. 
if I slip and slide with more anxiety, come back to the Lord. You know, come back to the Lord. Turn back to Him. So we need God every minute of the day. And God is love. God is full of love and mercy. Mean if we. He loves us in our weaknesses. And now it's important just to be sincere with Him. Lord, here I am again. <coughs> again, I'm slipping aside. And please help. He's a faithful God. He always comes to our aid. The biggest problem is when we ignore. When we go ignore uh, weaknesses or start being comfortable with them. You know, uh, my names uh, said, you know, uh, Matt Kelly, they said that he said uh, toward the end of his life, such as love. Uh, uh, su yes, such is love, we're only human, you know, but <coughs> to be human, uh, to be human in a, in a to be human in a perfect way is to be like Jesus. That, that's what we call to, to be. To be human, to be loving, to be kind, uh, to fulfill our life, to allow God to take over totally our life. So we need to imitate Jesus, you know? Embrace Mary as our mother and ask signs to help us on the past. Um, on the path to holiness. We will experience more and more true freedom of God. And uh, likely I'm sort of reading quite a bit uh, Sister Faustina. And it's amazing her childlike trust in the Lord. You know, she was a very sick person. Uh, and she, she, she was weak in certain uh, in, in certain uh, areas in her life. But such a child, childlike, it inspires me, such a childlike trust in God. No matter what was happening around, no matter um, what was, um, how others were treating her, she always had deep peace in her heart. So, brothers and sisters, we call in a sign of life um, to to decide for God, to allow Him be by in our lives, and, uh, and He's a faithful God. You know, He can make us signs. I think each one of us is called for that. It's never too late. You know, sometimes it's never too late. You know, we can, if devil can trick us, I think, you know, go might be snap someone else's heart and do this, you know, but he'll, he'll discourage us, you know, he'll, um, you know, I forgot to mention probably before, like I notice, if I'm, even if I'm in a good place, sometimes all these random thoughts come to distract me. And I remember once, you know, see, that's the, that's the mind, that's what we need to guard. I remember years ago, I was driving actually some way, and all of a sudden, you know, one of my children had a problem, a little bit of problem with their spouse, you know. And I remember all of a sudden, started these thoughts started coming about one of my son you know. All these thoughts, this, that. And, uh, and then I was trying to, to to get rid of it, of rebuke it, of this, but it was still coming, coming. And, uh, and then I remember how Martin said, how devil can, uh, what did you say, uh, how devil can uh, project his thoughts on our mind. And then as I was driving, I thought, oh, it's you, devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. It was completely gone. The, all the thoughts were gone. I started praying to the Lord, praying for family, this, that. So it wasn't my thoughts. It was evil one can do that. Or worry as well. And project on our mind. Look at this, look at that. 
So if we travel with, with the problems, if we travel with worries, so in whose interest is that? Certainly not in God's interest. So we need to, sort of I think, we need to get to know ourselves with God's help. You know, what, where, where are our weaknesses? How to, how to handle uh, evil attacks? You know, how to, how, how to come to that place of surrender? And it's not, you know, I think we need to take it seriously. You know, being on the path of holiness and, and following the Lord. And, and I think helps. Lord is always willing to help us. So anyway, I'll finish with that. Sorry. Um, um, thanks be to God. I hope it helped you, inspired you a little bit. Praise be God. <laughs>